I think of uh, recent years, I like the Backstreet Boys when they were going, I thought they were good. NSYNC as well. Uh, take that, I wasn't really sure of them to begin with, but they've certainly stayed the course and are doing really well now. So you wouldn't call Oasis a boy band, but really they were as well. But that was just two brothers, wasn't it? The rest of them, who are they? Oh, be careful what you say. <laughs> Well, you've got the Spice Girls who did very, very well, Banana Rama who did very well, the Girls Aloud have done quite well, but you know, it's all down to the song. It's irrelevant if it's a band, a solo singer, a duet, a duo, or whatever. It's, it's not important. Um, I mean, the first song for Spice Girls, you know, If You Want to Be My Lover, that one. Um, I can tell the work involved in that because when I hear the record I can hear it's a bit from this record, a bit from this mix, another version of a middle eight over here and a different thing over here and, and they've tried a different and somebody's pulled it all together finally and got what, the, what was the hit. Um, that I can see. Uh, Girls Aloud. Well, they, they, they've never managed, well Spice Girls were massive all over the world for a very short period of time on about two hit records really, two or three. Um, same with Girls Aloud, you know. There's not been the canon of work. But Banana Rama, I still, I still think, have probably outsold them. You know, they have more hits anyway. You know, uh, there are, in amongst the musicians of the world, there are two schools of thought. Uh, one says, steer clear of them. If you are a singer with any self-respect, don't go on the show. And there are others who will say, well, it's a great exposure for you, a great chance. But my view is there's only normally one winner, although they spin it out. Maybe there's two or three, but only really one major winner. And almost on every occasion, the one who wins is not the one the public really liked, but the voting arrangements by telephone or however they do it, they're all concocted in such a way that you know if you've got if if the telephone company make 20,000 lines available and then the TV company allocate to this singer 15,000 lines and to this singer 5,000 lines and now there's a phone vote well this singer is going to win because you can't get through on these lines so you never know what's going on and I don't I think on every he, the, you know, the first X Factor, was it the first one with uh, Gareth Gates and um, Will, Will Young? Everybody thought Gareth Gates was the winner. And he was the better pop star of them all, but Will Young won. But that, I think, was an arrangement with the phone company. You know? yeah, in, <laughs> in, Allegedly. In, in, in Germany, it's like, uh, it's often said that, um, you know, the best one is getting uh, second place and the, and the not so good one is getting first place, so they can sell both. You know, that's right. That's that. Well, that's what I mean. It's partly an arrangement with the TV company. And Simon Cowell would have said, yes, well, if I can get Will Young to win that, I know I've got a pop star over here with Gareth, so I've got two for the price of one. Exactly. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> There's no difference between The X Factor and Top of the Pops. Top of the Pops was the BBC flagship pop show, ran for many, many years, 30 years or 40, whatever it was, um, where young people would go live on television and sing hit songs. Well, that's exactly what happens on X Factor. Young people go on and sing hit songs. They sing songs you already know, songs that have already been hits. It doesn't matter that they're not current, but that's that's still the same as Top of the Pops. And you get an audience that's excited, and that excitement is transmitted across the cameras to the home audience. So it's the same as Top of the Pops. Strictly Come Dancing is the same, because in the Top of the Pops audience, you had kids dancing in the audience to people singing pop songs. Well, that's all that's happening on Strictly Come Dancing. They're singing pop songs, hit pop songs, there's a band live on stage doing it, and then people are dancing around to it. So, you know, th that's where um, X Factor, cl the clever, there was Pop Idol, X Factor, and a few others around the world have spotted that that's really what it is. It's just a weekly dose of pop music. T talent shows have taken the place of.
Top of the Pops as it used to be, or there used to be one on ITV, or the kids' Saturday morning shows. There used to be over here Live and Kicking, or uh, you know, a, a number of them, Multicoloured Swap Shop, and, and, and they would always feature pop acts at 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning. But they don't do it anymore because the content is inappropriate for children half the time. Well, um, the only reason I've mentioned Simon several times is because he paid me to. No, he didn't. He, um, I knew Simon years and years ago when he started a label uh, and we signed um, Sunita from that label and we worked and gave him a few hits that way. Simon then asked me to do um, the World Federing, the World Wrestling Federation. Uh, so I did some an album with them, had a couple of hit records. And then he asked me to do um, the Power Rangers. Um, so there's a lot of novelty stuff with, with Simon. And then he asked me to do uh, Robson and Jerome. So over the years, Simon knows a hit, I think. Because Simon knows the, not the hit in an isolation, but the hit related to a commercial possibility. You know, so that's what he understands the commercial possibility. Put this song with this person into this context and with enough promotion you've got your hit. I, I come from a different position where I'm starting with a blank sheet of paper and I've got to kind of write a hit and then I've got to find the commercial avenue to, to drive it down. So he starts from the other way around. He's found why he's doing the record before he's even done it. <laughs> 